Here I'm going to look at an organic chemistry question from Leaving Cert 2020. It's question 8. So like most of the organic chemistry questions, it starts off with a reaction scheme. So that starting with some material and showing how you can make different chemicals or products from that. So my initial approach here would be to, first in your head, try and identify each of the actual compounds. So you've got CH3CHO. There's two carbons and it's an aldehyde. So that one there is ethanol. I'm going to try not to write in skeletal formula and just write the normal structural formula. Okay, you've got an aldehyde and you can see there it's making the alcohol, ethanol. And something happens to that and you make C2H4. C2H4, well the two carbons have to be bonded. And you've got four hydrogens, so you've made ethene. And from ethene, then you've got C2H6, you make ethane. Like that. Okay, from ethane, you can make chloroethane. So here we've replaced one of the hydrogens with a chlorine. And go from ethane. And you can make that same product from ethene. Also from ethene, you can make the 1,2-dichloroethane. Okay, and that undergoes some sort of elimination reaction because you're losing HCl there to form a product. And if you're losing HCl from this molecule, it's quite likely that you're losing one hydrogen and one carbon and a chlorine off the other carbon. So in that elimination reaction, you're actually making this product the alkene, which is chloroethene, and then you can polymerize that. Okay, so you wouldn't have to draw it out, but just have an idea of what's going on before rushing into the questions. So, identify in the scheme a substitution reaction. All right, a substitution reaction is where you substitute one atom for another atom in the molecule. So, we're looking for overall no addition or elimination but where you've got the same number of atoms, but the atoms themselves are different. So straight away from here, I can see from ethane to chloroethane, that reaction there, one hydrogen is replaced. Okay, so that reaction there is a substitution. I'll just write the answers here. That would be four for one. Then you're asked for an addition reaction. So that's where we're adding atoms onto a smaller molecule to make a bigger molecule. So we, when we're using an addition reaction, usually you're starting off with an alkene because there you've got an alkene double bond. Okay, And the thing about an alkene double bond is you've got one of the bonds is a pi bond and one is a sigma bond. Okay, For more on that, look at the chemical bonding section. But it means that one of those bonds is slightly weaker and so it can break, and if it breaks, then you can you've the freedom to add atoms to either carbon. So what happens there is I'm going from ethene to chloroethane, we are adding atoms to that. So you can see that that Cl and that H have been added into it. So five there is an addition reaction. Also, six is an addition reaction because you're actually adding Cl2 there to your alkene in that instance. Then you're asked to identify an elimination reaction. Well, I've already said an elimination reaction is where you eliminate atoms from a molecule to make a smaller molecule. So here, actually, the elimination reaction is 7. So that was 5R6, and then 7 for the elimination. So that's 1. And that's two, and that's three. Okay, because we're eliminating HCl from that molecule to make the alkene there. Okay, what reagent and catalyst can be used for conversion one? Now, conversion one involves the change from an aldehyde to an alcohol. I'll just write some rough work here. B part one. You're going from that aldehyde to
that alcohol. Now, the reagents used for that in B part 1 are hydrogen, gas, and a nickel catalyst usually. Okay, so same stuff is used um, making margarine and things like that. So when you're taking an alkene and creating the alkane, you use hydrogen gas, you add hydrogen, but you need a nickel catalyst to help the reaction to proceed at a suitable rate. So the reagent and the catalyst there is going to be hydrogen and nickel. Hydrogen is the reagent and nickel is the catalyst. Okay, copy the structure of ethanol and identify clearly the bonds formed during conversion one. Okay, well, here I've got the ethanol, I've drawn it out, and identify the bonds formed. Well, if I have both here, you can see there that I've got a new carbon-hydrogen bond, but I've also got a new oxygen-hydrogen bond formed when you're making the alcohol. So this carbon here has gone from a planar arrangement with three atoms attached, but a double bond present, to four atoms attached and all of them being single bonds. I meant to say actually that other reagents you could use are lithium aluminium hydride or sodium borohydride. Okay, they're common reducing agents used in research, okay? So they are reducing agents. But if you want to just remember one Hydrogen and nickel, it works perfectly well. Okay, so there are the bonds that are formed during the reaction. Next, identify an organic substance in the scheme that is highly soluble in water. So when it comes to solubility in organic chemistry, we always talk about like dissolves like. So water we know is a very polar solvent. That means it, it dissolves things that are quite polar, but it's very good at dissolving things. It won't dissolve things that are very non-polar, like oil and a lot of the organic molecules that are non-polar. So, when I'm looking for something to be highly soluble in water, okay, I want something with the same intermolecular force as water. So anything that can hydrogen bond to water here will be very soluble. So, ethanol, for example. as an OH group there that will dissolve in water very well. Um, the aldehyde would also be very soluble in water because that can actually hydrogen bond to water molecules. Um, it says to identify compound X next, and I've already done that here. So compound X is just an alkene. So this is D part one. Okay, an alkene formed from the elimination of HCl from 1,2-dichloroethane. So that's the alkene there. It is chloroethene, or the old name for it was vinyl chloride. Um, hence the name polyvinyl chloride for the polymer. So how does the geometry around the carbon atom change during the conversion? Okay, so from that conversion of that molecule to that molecule. Well, you're going from a tetrahedral arrangement of the carbon atoms there to a trigonal planar arrangement, okay?
you can just write planar for that but essentially there you've got everything is in the one plane for the alkene so in two dimensions whereas when you have a tetrahedral arrangement it's in three dimensions that chlorine atom is actually coming out towards you it's going away from you so draw the structure of two repeating units of the polymer of pvc whenever a polymer is formed you don't have to write this out but you're forming it from the monomer okay and what happens is the double bond breaks And it essentially adds on to another molecule of itself. So another chloroethene molecule. And new single bonds are formed. So here, that will be one, and that will be another. Okay, so you form a new single bond, and you've broken the old double bond. So new single bond formed on each molecule. and the old bond is broken. So that would be two repeating units.